Ronaldo que es ese, un no aware of the building that's very very small and it's very very small which is not aware of the building when you learn Ramadan you miss part of the video you can learn to pay you back and then all the times you get by the group of Ramadan the part of the video is going to go to our business for the fact so now what is she compared to the pay the group of the fact since you know we are aware of إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن صيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير العدي أدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد أيها الإخوة والأخوات في الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. إن شاء الله we're going to take some questions and have answers on them. We pray Allah سبحانه وتعالى benefit us with whatever we hear. أمي سبحانه وتعالى reward everyone of us abundantly. أمي سبحانه وتعالى make us witness the coming. Month of Ramadan. Now the first question is a woman that is not aware of the Islamic ruling on some days. She has missed with respect to fasting due to her menstruation. What is the Islamic ruling on such a woman, particularly if? Her attention is called to that by her husband. Now on that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We are not going to punish people until we send a messenger to them. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Until we send a messenger to them, it means until the message, the right message, gets to them and they refuse to abide by it. That is when they will be punished. Or if they are negligent, they do not spare their time to learn the religion. And they have every opportunity to do this. In a situation like that, they will be punished. But somebody who is ignorant, there is nobody to teach him or her the right religion. She is only practicing what she hears from people and what she knows. If what she hears or does is contrary to the sunnah, so the verse of Makunna Mu'adhibin Hatta Nabaatha Rasulan will be applicable to such a person. So this is one. Two, the scholars will say, according to the stronger opinion, Ashara'ihu la telzam illa ba'd al-ilm. Ashara'ihu la telzam illa ba'd al-ilm. The laws, the Islamic laws, are not binding on people until the people are away. Now one thing is to be punished, another thing is the obligation of such a law on a person. So one is not bound by Islamic law until he gets to know to know it. So since this woman is not aware of the Islamic ruling of paying back the missed days in Ramadan, 
if her attention is caused to that by her husband after she must have fasted a lot of days, is she going to pay back? We will go by this principle, Ash-Shara'u la tilzam illa ba'd al-ilm, we say no, she is not going to pay back. And there are some instances from the practices of the pious with the scissors that can also portray this position. An example is the hadith of Hamna to bin Tujash. Hamna to bin Tujash, radiallahu anha, was suffering from istihada. Was suffering from istihada. Istihada is different from Hajj. Hajj is the monthly uh, menstruation that a woman does. That is Hajj. But the istihada is something that has to do with maybe uh, a vein, a woman having a broken vein, so to say, in her. And this will be leading to the blood coming out of a vagina. So for this reason, this woman would treat this is the harbor that she was suffering from. She would treat it as height. And for days she did not observe salah. Possibly she did not also fast. But when Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa got to know about this, Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Da'i as salata ayyam akraik. The days that you are menstruating, don't observe salah. Then the other days, you observe salah in them. So this is what damu irq is a, 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 is a, a vein that has broken. So Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked her to be observing salah. The shahi days, the Messenger of Allah did not tell the woman to pay back those Salah that she has missed. He did not tell her to pay back those salat that she had missed. Why? Because she was ignorant of the ruling. This portrays the statement Ashara'u la tilzam illa ba'd al ilm. The sharia is not obligatory on anyone until the person is aware of it. Or maybe the person is living in an environment where he or she is supposed to be aware of it. But she refuses to learn or he refuses to learn. In a situation like that, she will punish for that. Because and not knowing the truth is as a result of our negligence. Another example is an example of the man who prayed wrongly. We all know the case of the man when he entered the masjid, he gave the slim to the Messenger of Allah Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Or after he had observed the salah, when he was about to leave the masjid, he gave the slim to the Messenger of Allah Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And Messenger of Allah told him, "Irshul fasalli fa inakalam tu salli." Go back and observe salah. You have not observed salah. So the man did these three times. Ah, Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was sending him back. The third time, Messenger of Allah, that the man said to the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, وَالَّذِي بَعَثَكَ بِالْحَقِّ مَا أُحْسِنُ غَيْرَهِ I swear by the one who has raised you with the truth, I don't know how to pray better than this. And Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, taught him how a Muslim should observe Salah. The shahid here, is that Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not ask the man to pray all the salawat that he had prayed wrongly. Rather, he started from the immediate one. So there are a lot of examples like that in the in the history of the Muslims during the time of the Messenger of Allah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So such a lady, it is not are uh, binding on her to pay back the missed days. It is not binding on her to, to do that. Wallahu a'lam.
situation that we have been doing, the woman inherits the whole property. What is the situation that we warrant a woman to inherit all the bequests left by a husband? Now, based on what we have learned, that a woman, particularly we are talking about the, the wife now, is either she inherits one over eight of the property. And that is when the husband leaves behind children or a child. Whether the child was born by this woman or was born by another woman huh, to the husband. Either the child was born by the woman or was born by another woman to the husband. The most important thing is that the man leaves behind a child who is a Muslim huh? a child who is a Muslim so if this is the case the woman is going to inherit one over each of the property even if they are more than one that is if the wives are more than one so all of them will share one over eight of the property equally but if the man does not leave behind a child. If the man does not leave behind a child, the woman is going to inherit one fourth. The woman is going to inherit one fourth. Why? Because the man does not leave behind somebody that can reduce the inheritance of the woman huh, to one eighth. But in the presence of somebody who can reduce the inheritance of the woman to one age, who is the child. So in that case, the woman will inherit one over each. In the absence of that, the woman will inherit one fourth. Now the question is, when is a wife going to inherit all the bequest of the husband? So this tells us that there are no what? No child. Because the presence of a, a child that is Muslim will not enable the woman to inherit everything. That is one. There is no mother for the deceased. That's another one. Huh? The presence of the mother will, uh, will, will not enable the, the woman to inherit everything. There is no father. The presence of the father would not enable the woman to inherit everything. So there are no brothers. The siblings are not also around. So which means the, 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 the absence of as harbor for which huh, will be established. That is what two. What, likewise the absence of as harbor ta'asi, those who will take everything is also what is also established. So the woman is the only one left. No sahibu fard, no sahibu ta'asib. I hope it is clear. Now in the absence of sahibu fard and sahibu ta'asib, the scholars they disagree on this. Some of the opinions that the wife cannot inherit everything. She cannot inherit everything because she has taking her own part of it. Likewise, the husband cannot inherit in everything left by the husband. How could this claim? Now, what will now happen? Some scholars of the opinion that this should be given to, should be taken back to Beitul Mal. Should be taken back to Beitul Mal. Some of the opinion of given the the Zawul Arham, huh? some of the opinion that the woman can also take everything, huh? which is called Aroddu. Aroddu is the absence, in the absence of those who inherit, so they turn back whatever is left to the soil of fart that is around. So this is called what? Aroddu. So, but there is no clear court evidence. 
from the Sharia that says this is what should, should be done. And that's why the scholars, they disagree on it. Some of the opinion that no, she cannot inherit everything. She cannot in inherit everything. Because she, she is what? Sahiba to Farj. Walaysat sahiba ta ta'asim. She's not among those who take everything. Huh? After the, the, the Ashab al furud have taken the house. So, in a situation like that, she cannot inherit every, everything. She will only take her own portion. Then the rest will be given to, maybe return to Baytul Mal. Huh? Or, it will be given to Ashab. Uh, given to the whole Arham. Those who are relatives. Huh? Maybe those who are relatives, for instance, the, the whole Arham, somebody who is a relati relation of the woman or the father who come in place of maybe the father, something like that. So Ashab al or Ashab, uh, sorry, Ashab al uh, Dawul Arham, there will be those that will come according to those who believe that the whole Arham, they inherit. But as I've said, some scholars of the opinion that the whole Arham, they are not going to in Erich, how it is claimed. So it is Ashab al Furuj that who in Erich, not Jews that you can call the will Arham, that this will not in Erich. So in the absence of this, they say the money will be taken to, to be taken to Baytul Man. Allah Allah. What if the grandfather or grandmother? Yes, it's based on what you have discussed before. If the father is not around, is absent, and the grandfather, that is the, 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 the father of the father, is around. So the father of the father comes to the place of the father. Like that. Huh? So, which means that Sahibu Ta'asib, if he's around, the Sahibu Ta'asib. So the woman cannot take everything. So in the absence of Ashab al Furuj, Ashab al Furuj and Ashab al Ta'asib, can the wife take everything? Then when we go by what some scholars have said, that the whole Arham will take. Those scholars who do not believe that the whole Arham have any share of inheritance, they will say, look, it will be taken to be to the man. Then there's what is called Roddu. Roddu is after Ashab al Furuj, they've taken. Their shares, huh? they've taken their own shares. So, whatever is left, if there is nobody to take it again, this will be returned back to Ashab al Furud. But some scholars do not believe in Roddu as well. So, some scholars do not believe in Roddu, just as some scholars do not believe that what the whole Arham have any share. So, what will happen? They said, okay, this should be taken to Beitul Mal. Should be taken to Beitul Mal. Wallahu alam. Somebody said that he intended to pray Now, Alhamdulillah, Salatu Salam ala Rasulullah Abad. Now, I'm starting with the second question. Those who are trapped in the house or in the building and they are prevented from going to observe Salatu Juma in any of the uh, masjids that are around, can they observe Salatu Juma uh, alone? The answer is no. The answer is no, because they are in the in the community, they are in the society. So, when they are prevented by the rain from observing Salat al-Jumu'ah, they pray zuhr. 
the prey Zor. And Zor is Badr. It's a substitute for, for Jumu'ah. And that's why the females, they observe Salat Zor instead of Salat Al Jumu'ah. So, in other words, Salat Al Jumu'ah is not compulsory on the females. It's not compulsory on the females. So, Badal, Salat Al Zor is Badal for, for Jumu'ah. It's Badal for Jumu'ah. So, in, when they are prevented from observing Salat Al Jumu'ah, so they resort to the Badal, which is Salat al -Zur. So they won't pray Salat al -Jumu ah. Why? Because they are in the, in the city. So, Allah wa'ala. Now the first question, the person who intends praying Salat al -Jumu ah in a masjid. But the person trying to locate that masjid uh, could not locate it uh, maybe easily. Then it is time for Juma. For him not to miss the Juma, he decides to pray in the masjid. What he has done is okay. Now I'm looking for the masjid that he's been looking for because of what the program that he intends attending there. On getting there, he finds them observing Salatu al Juma. What should he do? Can he join them or he should stay aloof? Saying that what he has observed Salat al Jumu'ah. Now, when we look at the general text, Messenger of Allah Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, like the man who was uh, two men who prayed in Masjid Khayf, uh, they prayed in their tent. So when they got to the Masjid, they saw Messenger of Allah Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the companions of the Salah. They did not join them. So after the Salah, Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam called both of them. And both of them went to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, entertaining fear. And Messenger of Allah Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that, "Ida sallaytu ma fi rihali kuma, thumma ataytu ma mazida jamaatin." If both of you observe salah in your tent, then you get to the masjid of the jamaah. Said, "Fasalliya ma'ahum." Observe salah with them. It will be nafila for you. So when we go by this general text and some other hadith, we say what the person has done, we cannot say it is what it is not. Okay. So for him to join them, despite the fact that he observed Salatu al Jumu'ah ah before, it's like joining them after he has observed Salatu al Asri or Salatu al Isha and the likes. So what he did is. Perfectly okay. Wallahu a'lam. Wa alaikum as-salam. Yes, sir. Now, concerning the first question, is it permissible for a woman to hug her husband in the presence of other family? What does that mean? Other family that is her children, or other family, the relatives of the husband? Well, come watch me. There is nothing wrong Islamically from such a person hugging her husband. But if he's going to send a wrong message to people, Maybe the one is in, a, in, a, in a, an environment that people don't do things like that. They believe those who are, uh, who do not have a, what's it called? Huh? Haya. Uh -huh. Those who are not modest, they are those who are practicing things like this. In order to send a wrong message, or in order to avoid sending wrong message to them, she should not do such a thing. But Islamically, there is nothing wrong in it. So if one is, is, is in a society where people practice something like that, it is okay. But if one is in a society where people do not do things like that, they consider things like that uh, a, a, a signs of uh, a modesty, so to say, then she should avoid it, not because it is wrong Islamically, but because the people are not enlightened as far as that thing is concerned. So the enlightenment of the people should come first 
before such practices are done. Wallahu alam. But Sharia wise, there is nothing wrong about that. Wallahu alam. Uh, there is nothing wrong Islamically. There is nothing wrong Islamically as far as that is concerned. If this is just within his, uh, his family, that is a man's family, so this is uh, better understood. There is a hadith that Messenger of Allah Muhammad sallallahu alaihi was trying to touch Aisha, and she was maybe putting uh, uh, his hand away from her. So in the presence of another uh, another woman, another lady, so she was surprised. The Son of Allah said, you are surprised at this. She will do that a lot of time. So this tells us that there is nothing wrong Islamically as far as that is concerned. But some women, they tend to feel shy when their husband practices something like that, maybe in the presence of another person. But Islamically, it is not wrong at all. It is not wrong at all. Allah Allah. Yes. A Muslim woman working in government ministry, is it permissible? Now, generally speaking, it is permissible. But whether government ministry or private uh, sector, if a woman is uh, working in uh, such a place, if a woman is working in such a place, there must not be promiscuity, there must not be free mixing, and the woman should not engage in just uh, chatting and discussing with people unnecessarily. She should uh, respect her honor and so on and so forth. So these are the conditions that are attached to it. Secondly, it must be a job that is halal, not something that is haram. If it is haram, then it is not permissible for a Muslim to work in a place that is haram. So the job itself must be something that is halal, number one. Number two, all other conditions must be fulfilled. No free mixing, no uh, discussing with people unnecessarily, no smiling at men unnecessarily. So because all these things, they invite evil. So some men, they enjoy discussing with other people's wives. So this is where they see their own delight. So discussing with, with men, with women. Just as some women also enjoy that. It has a kind of uh, impact on them uh, sexually. That they just enjoy discussing with uh, women or discussing with, with men. So some people is not to have sex that is everything to them. If they just see somebody chatting with them, discussing, laughing with an opposite sex, they are satisfied as far as that is concerned. So there are some women like that, that not just having sex always, but for their husband to just be discussing with them and things like that, laughing, smiling. A woman, if she sees that, some women, they can, they can do away with what? With having sexual intercourse for, for years. So if such is allowed in the, in the working environment, that a woman would just be making a, uh, maybe engaging in things like this with men. So this is what Killatul Haya, that is the absence, so to say, or little modesty in such a... The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us Al Haya Min Al Iman. Al Haya Min Al Iman. Al Haya is part and parcel of Iman, modesty. So one should not engage in free talk with, with an opposite sex. So an Iman that allows that the man is what? Qalilul Haya. He's Qalilul Haya. Which means a man is not that modest. He doesn't have a, uh, what's it called? Uh, he does not have a, a, a gaira for the wife. No gaira for the wife. No jealousy for the wife. And a man should be jealous. Huh? A man should be, should be jealous. Because the jealousy of a man shows that what? He respects his harem, his, his wife. But if a, a man allows his wife to be what? To be free and promiscuous and so on and so forth. This shows what? 
qillatu al hayya le messager of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said lan yadkhul al jannata dayyuthun a dayyuth will not be admitted into al jannah without being punished and that is a man that leaves his wife to be to be free with people wallahu alam Now, uh, concerning the the palm wine, that is when it is first collected, it does not intoxicate. If that is uh, scientifically proven that it does not intoxicate when it is first collected, what the Sharia says is ma askara qaliluhu fakathiru haram. So whatever little quantity of it intoxicates taking much of it is what now whatever ma askara kathiruhu whatever much of it will intoxicate for qalilu haram taking little of it is what is haram so if it is proven that when you take this take much of it it will intoxicate you so even little don't take but if this illa is absent then that means it is what it is permissible so wal hukmu yaduru ma illatihi wujudan wa adama so the illa why something is prohibited huh goes with the presence of the illa wa adaman and what is absent huh the, the presence of the illa if the illa that is the reason why something is prohibited if it is present then it is prohibited if the reason is absent then that thing goes halal so this is what the scholars of usul say al hukm yadur ma illatihi the ruling goes with the reason wujudan that is if the reason is present the ruling is present wa adaman if the ruling is if the illa is absent the ruling is absent so as long as it is confirmed that it does not intoxicate when it is first collected that is not the khamru the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is talking about that is not the khamru that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about and that is why messenger of Allah Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam attends he will order his wives to prepare uh, a kind of uh, uh, wine for him huh? and that is by soaking dates they take dates and put it in water and they soak it so the the the, the, the nutrients so to say will be collected in the water and they drink this but after three days messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam if it gets to the third day he will not drink it because by then he may have become what he may have become intoxicating it may have become intoxicating so and it becomes what khamru wal khamru ma khamar al aqla so khamru is what affects the the intellect so what affects the brain that is what al khamru so they did not call it khamru is because what to khamiru al aqla because it affects the the aql so al hukm yaduru ma illatihi wujudan wa adama so if that is proven it is uh, permissible to to take it however such a thing should be avoided not because it is haram hmm? but because somebody sees you taking it may say you are taking what khamr that has been forbidden so enlightenment must have proceeded before one embarking on uh, things like that so because a muslim should as much as possible avoid things that will make his honor his honor be stained huh? things that to make one honor be stained we should we should avoid it so allah alam Point. 
but it is after the implementation that it comes to hospital. At that period, the period between the time he interpret from the tree and the period of the implementation, the deposit activity did not yet. As long as it does not intoxicate. As long as it doesn't intoxicate. And that's why I said, Messenger of Allah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, soaking it in water, you will avoid it after maybe three days. So it, it, it varies from one uh, fruit to the other. It varies from one fruit to the other. So one shouldn't use it three days as what? The yastic. No. It's, it is the fermentation and the intoxication that, that matters. Because that's this uh, uh, popular Zobo. No. If you leave that zobo for some period of uh, days, the taste is different from when it's originally prepared. Does it intoxicate? That I don't know. Uh, so this, if it is what? That was the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said what? He said, Ma askara kathiruhu faqaliluhu haram. Ma askara kathiruhu faqaliluhu haram. So anything that you take that when you take much of it you get intoxicated. Faqalilu haram. Just taking little of it is what is haram. It is haram. So Allah alam. So it is the, the intoxication that matters. The intoxication that matters. And that's why you see some scholars who say maybe some things that are produced. If in the process of uh, producing them maybe an amount of uh, uh, alcohol is added. Maybe one percent. Uh -huh. So and that thing has undergone change. So they say what? It is halal to eat it. As long as what you are not the one taking in Tosican to process that particular thing. It is haram on you as a Muslim to to process it. Likewise, it is haram for you to watch delegate that to somebody that I'm a Muslim, I don't you can process it. It's the same thing. But let's say a John a Kennedy, for instance, prepares it, and the end product is what is something that if you take, it does not intoxicate. It is not hamu. It is not hamu. But you, for you to nicely, okay, it's just little quantity of intoxicant that you are going to add, so to make the cake. Okay, just as some of our sisters that uh, uh, prepare or bake. So they, they add what some of them will tell you that uh, for the cake to be okay to preserve the cake they have to add what alcohol to it. This you can do haram, huh? haram. But let's say somebody does the cake and the cake does not intoxicate. Can you eat it? Yes, you can eat it as long as what it does not intoxicate. Not because there is little alcohol in it. If you want to go by that, you say what haram. But the re the reason is what. That alcohol, so to say, has what? A changed. Huh? The process has changed it so you are not taking. And it's not prepared by a Muslim. It's not prepared by. Even by a Christian, it's not permissible for our or, or him to prepare it. But now it has been done. It has been done. The end result, the end product is what we are talking about now. Can you take it? The question is if you take it, are you taking what can intoxicate you? If no, then you can take it. But there is what alcohol in what in the process of getting that thing. No, this is no more alcohol. Sheikh Rizal ibn Taymiyyah ta'ala expatiated on, on this in his uh, fatawa. And he gave example. For instance, when you take, uh, you, you take uh, uh, fruits, you, take, you eat uh, vegetables and the likes. When you eat these things, when they get to your stomach, they are still okay. But when they come out of you, it becomes what? Filth. And that filth is what? It is najis. But what you have consumed, is it najis? The vegetable that you have consumed is not najis. But when it comes out of you, it becomes what? Najis. Likewise, when we, when we look at the, the milk that the, 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 the baby takes, uh, that the woman produces, so the... The, the, it is what Allah SWT said what it comes from what so the, the milk goes good milk uh, 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 good milk pure milk comes between what between between the blood and what the the, 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 the faces the, 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 the milk is produced between what between that 
So, and what the meek is given, what pass mark that this is what halal. Why the faces are the blood? They are what things that you cannot eat. But the, the, the meek comes out of that. So, this tells us that what something good may come out of something that what that is not good. I hope it is clear. So, we say this is what halal. The same thing is applicable now. The intoxicant mixed with some things has what undergone change. So now you are not taking intoxicant, you are taking cake, for instance. Huh? You are taking biscuits, for instance. And that's why some of our brothers, when they want to condemn some companies, say maybe they have so and so, there is so and so amount of uh, intoxicant in need there. So no, no. The issue is not that so and so amount of intoxicant, the issue is what does it intoxicate? If it doesn't intoxicate, you don't have to bother yourself about that because the process it has undergone hmm, has killed that thing. However, this is not a sanction of those who prepare this local ago with uh, Ogogoro and the likes of Shinab. No. This one is clear. Huh? It intoxicates. So it is not permissible to prepare, that's number one. Two, even if it is prepared, the end result is what? Is intoxicating is intoxicating Allah. Uh, no, So it still goes back to what has been said. One, we have to get information from those who are in that line. So then, secondly, we have to establish the intoxication. So if intoxication is what? Presence. al hukm yaduru ma'illatihi ujudan wa'adam. I hope it is clear. So if intoxication is presence, that is what? So we cannot give general renown that what? If it is touched immediately, it is permissible. We can't give that general reading because we have examples that what that are against that. So what should be based is what is the illa, the intoxicating effect of it. So if that thing has intoxicating power, as long as what is a, is a touch, then we say it is haram because the illa is here already. Allah <laughs> Yes, it, it, it is applicable to it. Some scholars will give example. Take for instance, if a, a, a pig dies, and that pig where it dies, it what decomposes. After that, it turns salt. Can we make use of that salt? Yes, we can make use of the salt. But the origin is what? Pig. Huh? So you can make use of make use of it. I hope it is clear. So but can we now turn peak to watch add peak with some things and watch to produce something? No. Haram. But it has been done. Now are we eating pork? No. I hope it is clear. So there is a difference between the end product and the process. The process a Muslim should not participate. Even a Christian should not participate because the the Christians al kufaru mukhatabuna bi furu'i sharia. They are also addressed by the furu of the Sharia. That is the laws uh, that are addressing some other issues apart from aqidah. So they are called the furu of the Sharia. So they are addressed by the furu of Sharia. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ma salakakum fi saqar. What has made you go into air? Qalu lam nakum nil musallin. That would not pray. Wa lam nakum nutimul miskin. Would not feed the miskin. Wa kunna 
nakhudu ma'al qa'idin wa kunna nukadhibu bi yawmiddin hatta atana al-yaqin fama tanfa'uhum shafa'atu shafi'in so they mention salah they mention what zakat so likewise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said wa ma mana'u man tuqbala minhum nafaqatuhum illa annahum kafaru billahi wa bi rasuli nothing prevents their sadaqat their zakat from being prevent, from being accepted except that what they disbelieve in Allah and his messenger so they are addressed by the furor sharia the kuffar are supposed to be observing salah they are, they are supposed to be observing what zakah and so on and so forth but if they observe salah zakah and all this it will not be accepted from them why because there is an hindrance and that hindrance is what the kufru if the kufru is what is lifted this acts will be what accepted I hope it is clear. A kafir that has been engaging in good deeds, he has been what supporting people, assisting people, doing a lot of good deeds. He will not get the reward for those things. But once he embraces Islam, he will get the reward of all those good deeds that watch. Huh? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah said, What kulli ladina kafaru in tahu? Tell the disbelievers that if they go away from what they are doing, you for law maqad salaf. So all they've preceded eh, will be forgiven. So the kufru is what? Is an hindrance. But are they addressed with the furrow of the sharia? Yes, they are addressed. So don't say the fasting is for the Muslims. No. The fasting is not for the Muslims. It is for everybody. Everybody is supposed to fast. But some people decide to do what? To be kufar. They decide to what? To be kufar. So, and when they are kufar, so if they won't fast, the fast will not be accepted from them. But when the kufru is what lifted, they get reward for all those things that they've been doing. So, the correct opinion is that what al kufar mukhatabuna bi furu'i sharia. The kufar they address with all other things that the Muslims are addressed with. But if they do, they will not. Be rewarded if they do not do they will be punished on the day of qiyamah for not doing those things they will be punished for not praying so their punishment will not be li limited to watch to kufru only no they will also be questioned concerning their salah their zakat their hajj their no they'll be questioned because all those things are binding on watch on human beings to do so they didn't do those things they will be questioned for not doing it Wallahu Okay, you've asked a question. Yes, okay. No. You said everybody is addressed in fast. But we, uh, in the ayah that we have in Christ, Ya Ayu and Lady Yaha, when we put Bari in the Siyah. And I've heard other scholars mention that it is mainly for the Muslims. Yeah. Not for the Christian after my because I can't stop Islam. I was in the last year, yeah, I was I, I was tribute to the information that when we were fasting, do not come to fasting. <laughs> 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 so now you're not saying about the political fasting. <laughs> <laughs> so now you're not saying about the political fasting. So they do fast people. But now you're not saying that they are supposed to fast, but they won't get the reward. But we have in the Quran that yeah, you are living on the Quran. There is no contradiction. I read the verse earlier. What made you enter hell? Qalu lam naku nel musalli. You will not observe salah. So this is with respect to the kuffar. Are the kuffar addressed with prayer? Yes. Yes, everybody is supposed to. Yeah, you know, if they are not there, they didn't embrace Islam. Now, the, the question is is prayer, fasting, Hajj composing on them? Yes. It's not composing on them. Now, if you say it's not composing on them, you are taking the view of the scholars who say, as al kufaru leysu mukhatabina bi furu'i sharia that's a statement of the of some scholars but when we look at the issue critically we say what al kufaru mukhatabuna bi furu'i sharia 
Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, take for instance, وَمَا مَنَعَهُمْ أَن تُقْبَلَ مِنْ أُمْ نَفَقَاتُهُمْ Nothing prevents their nafaqat, their spending. They are doing with good intention. But nothing prevents these from what being accepted. إِلَّا نَمْ كَفَرُ بِاللَّهِ رَسُولِ Except that what they disbelieve in Allah and His watch, messenger. I hope it is clear. So, which means the goodies that they are doing, ordinary would have been accepted from them. But the kufru watch is preventing. So when we say they are not mukhatabun before the sharia, that means they are not supposed to be watch. They are not supposed to be engaging in ibadah. They are not supposed to be engaging in ibadah. So it is only those who are watch that are Muslims that should be engaging in ibadah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said what? Ya ayyuhal nasu abudu rabbakum alladhi خَلَقَكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ عُبُودُ الْعُبُودُ رَبَّكُمْ الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ So is what? يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ And what? The salah, the fasting, the hajj, everything is part of ibadah. So those scholars who say they are not mukhatabun, what they are saying is that if they do those things, they will not get rewards for them. Until they embrace Islam. Then, on the day of Qiyamah, they are not going to be punished for not fasting. They will be punished for what? For kufr. Not for not fasting, not for not praying. But that is, doesn't agree with what? The verse. مَا سَلَكَكُمْ فِي سَقَرْ قَالُوا لَمْ نَكُوا نَلْمُصَلِّينَ So they also said what? So, وَلَمْ نَكُوا نُطْعِمُوا الْمِسْكِينَ وَكُنَّا نَخُوضُ مَعَ الْخَائِدُ وَكُنَّا نُكَذِّبُ بِهُمْ حَتَّى أَدَّانَ الْيَقِينَ فَمَا تَنْفَعُ مِشَفَعَةُ شَعْفِينَ So the correct opinion, not the more correct opinion, the correct opinion is that what? الكفار مخاطبون بفروع الشريعة الله no if as for punishing them no but as for preaching for them yes in an Islamic state yes they preach and that is what what the dawah stands upon Messenger of Allah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent Mu'adh bin Jabal to Yemen and he said to him إِنَّكَ تَعْتِ قَوْمًا أَهْلَ كِتَابٍ فَلِيَكُمْ أَوَّلَ مَا تَدْعُمِ لَيْ شَهَادَةُ أَلَّا إِلَا إِلَا اللَّهِ فَإِنُوا مَا طَعُوا لَكَ بِذَلِكِ فَعَلِمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ افْتَرَضَ عَلَيْهِمْ خَمْسَ الصَّلَوَاتٍ فِي الْيَوْمِ وَالْلَيْلَةِ So you are going to Testimony that there is nobody worthy of worship except Allah. No deity worthy of worship except. If they obey you in that, then proceed to salah. So you have to watch. So and that's why you, you tell somebody who is a kafir to start praying, praying with us. No, prayer is not the first thing. Because if he prays, the prayer will not be accepted. So let us watch. Remove and take away the kufru, the order that is what preventing, that will prevent any ibadah done by such a person from being accepted. So we take that away first. So they will invite them to watch, to salah. Umir tu anuqatil an nas hatta yashhadu Allah ila ila Allah. Huh? Wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Wa iqami. Like that. So, wallahu alam. If one can eat cake, if one can eat cake, can one eat birthday cake? Now, as for eating cake, if it does not intoxicate, then one can eat it. But when it is attached to birthday, birthday is a celebration that Islam does not sanction. And there is principle. Eid is ibadah. Eid is what? Ibadah. And birthday is what? Eid. And Eid is ibadah. And ibadah, nobody has the right to watch. Institute any ibadah. Where do we get the principle that Eid is ibadah? We got it from what Messenger of Allah Muhammad did when he arrived in Medina. 
as contained in Sunan Abi Dawood, he found the people of Medina celebrating two Eids, and that was or the, 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 the two Eids were Eid Nairuz, the other one was Eidu Mahrajan. So Nairuz, the, the Persians, they still celebrate it up to today. So they call it Nairuz. It's just like uh, something of New Year or like that to the, to the, to the Iranians. So Nairuz to them is just like what the New Year that people celebrate here and uh, some other places. So Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ma hadan al These two days, what are they for? He said, Kunna nal'abu fi ima fil jahiliya. We used to watch, pray in them in jahiliya. A Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Fa inna Allah qad abdalakum bi ima khayran min huma. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you a substitute in place of the two of them to the, one, the ones that are better. Yom al-Adha wa Yom al-Fitri Yom al-Adha wa Yom al-Fitri So he didn't tell them that Hajj these two to those ones He said Allah has given you eh, A substitute This So which means the basis is what Al-Eid Ibadah Al-Eid is what Tawqifi Is something that is based on text Not something that we For some of the okay I have a uh, uh, maybe I'm uh, 20 years old today So I'll be celebrating my bad day So when we say read It's something that what? Ya'ud It goes and come back It goes and come back On a particular person So any festivity that we going Coming back, going, coming back Going, coming back So such a festivity Is treated as read It's not permissible in the Sharia So you can't eat the cake Not because You can't eat cake but because it is premised on something that is haram. Now, uh, the money of car, any time from uh, Fajru, that is uh, what we call the money. So, they can be done uh, 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 from that time. They can be done from that time. So, Allah alam. And when they say the azkar of uh, uh, Masa, so uh, the, this also start from Salatul Zuf. Uh, as time, uh, as long as watch the sun has moved away from the meridian, so Masa has started. Masa has started. So if you are asked to do a zikru of Masa, so Masa starts from. From that time, Allah wa Now, no, there is no anything that says this is what should be done. We know when we are doing Ijtikaf, it is bad. So, recitation of the Quran, doing Adkar, observing Nawafil. So the one who is doing itikaf and is in the masjid and tarawih is being observed in the masjid. So the tarawih that is observing in the masjid is part and parcel of what? Itikaf that he's doing. So likewise looking for the night of Qadr, the tarawih that is observing in the masjid together with the people is what? Part and parcel of what? The search for the Laylatul Qadr. So there is no any specific thing that is mentioned that should be done in our itikaf. Now, can we use that for maybe sitting of knowledge? Maybe sitting of knowledge be organized. This a lot of scholars speak against. That the one who is doing itikaf is not to be what engaging in what something of uh, knowledge. It should be something of what something of maybe engaging in azkar, kirat, Quran, and so on and so forth. But if one does it. There is no clear text that prohibits it, but it shouldn't be the day that that is what one we concentrate on. I say maybe you are doing it just for to be enlightening people. <coughs> that is not the basis. Messenger of Allah did the itikaf, so there was no any special lectures that was uh, it was given to the companions at that time. Rather, he engaged in what in the ibadah, 
he engaged in ibadah, recitation of the Quran, and so on and so forth. Not special lectures, lectures, lectures. But if this is done, one cannot uh, completely go against it. That is, if lectures are also attended while one is doing uh, irtikaf. But for us to not see that as something that will be the main thing, no, this is against the son of the Messenger of Allah, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now I'm working in stock exchange, which means one will be uh, doing a kind of uh, brokerage, so to say. So somebody wants to sell, somebody wants to buy, you'll be the one connecting them and things like that. So what matters is what is a person selling. What is a person buying? This is what matters. Somebody wants to sell in Tosi Kant, who wants what a buyer for whatever he's selling. So they want to share their, sell their own shares. And somebody who doesn't mind to buy any shares, who buy what the shares of Buris, for instance, or buy the shares of bank, or buy the shares of some of the media houses, and so on and so forth. That you know that these media houses, what they do is what? They uh, promote promiscuity, they promote indecencies, and so on and so forth. So what is good of what they do is very, very little. So maybe the, the, the telling of news and things like that. But most of the things that they do, they also make more money in watching the promotion of the acts of indecencies and things like that. So in a situation like that, a Muslim should not buy the shares of such a, a company. So this is a one. So secondly, if it involves maybe something of a river again, I mean buying the shares, if it involves something of river, then this is also prohibited. So then hardly will somebody go here without watch partaking in something like that. Because if you want to be holy some, somehow, you will not get watch. You won't get customers to, to connect. So this is the area that uh, uh, one will emphasize. So Allah wa Allah. The issue of omit did not validate the past. As explained by some scholars, can it be stated? Yeah, I'm requesting you to shed more light on that. That for me, it doesn't. Now, what Messenger of Allah Muhammad is, uh, what he said is, will kay, or was saying, whoever is fasting, and the person is uh, overpowered by al qay by vomit, said Falaqadu Ali. So the person shouldn't pay back. Woman is taqa'a, whoever forces himself to vomit, he said, Faliyakadi. Such a person should pay back. So apart from being sinful, huh, he should pay back. Unless if he has a genuine reason for what? For vomiting. Huh? So you only pay back, no sin on him. But for somebody to deliberately vomit, this is what? It's a sinful act in addition to what? In addition to the fact that he has to pay back that day. So what this is what the Hadith says. Man dhara ul kayu wa huwa sa'imun Fala qado alihi. Woman is the qaa amdan. Whoever deliberately vomits, fa alihi al qado. He should pay back. Allah wa'ala. Now, concerning, um, if you find books from outside the country, when you are bringing it to some of the books, if you are bringing it to the court, you ask you to pay some money. Such money is now the import duties that people pay or the government collects from, from people, scholars they look at it from different angles. A lot of scholars have said it is not permissible. 
and they liken that to what is called al max al max is the money that some people forcefully collect from some of the merchants or the traders so they block the way they block them from entering the town and they will tell them that they won't be allowed to enter until they pay so and so amount so this is called max in the fiqh of islam a messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam talking about this a woman that committed prostitution when she was being stoned to death and the blood splashed on somebody and one of them said la'anakillah may the wrath of allah be upon you because he felt bad that the blood of the woman has stained him messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said don't do that laqatabat tawbatan law tabaha saibu maksin la ghufira la she has repented in such a way that if somebody who is engaged in max were to repent such in a such way la ghufira la it will be pardoned it will be forgiven so we all know that zina is what is a very serious crime if somebody who committed zina and she's been stoned to death were to be forgiven in such a way that soybo max that means soybo max is what is very sinful person so they said watch the government collects from people as the import duties or taxes generally falls under max that islam is against now these scholars they are asked but what if the country needs something they said the country should what collect donations from people that during the time of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam people watch would do some things as an act of kindness as act of kindness so they collect donations from people and if the worst come to the worst they want to do something they can impose money on what some individuals to do this but for us to put down that okay we'll be collecting tax on everything you buy so they say this is like what collecting maksu from people who are bringing and islam is against us however some scholars are of the opinion that the tax that is collected or tax is collected from people if they are used for the benefit of the people that this will not be seen as max this will not be seen as max if they are used for the benefit of the people they are judiciously used not that some people are collecting and they watch they are growing fat on it so this should be tantamount to watch to the max that people but this is used for the benefit of the people that people can feel the roads are watch are, 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 are done likewise maybe the they, they are used for things that will benefit the people so it's like what collecting from the people to what should benefit the people so they say what we disagree in this and this is the position of uh, Sheikh Ismail Mandakar one of the scholars in uh, Kuwait likewise uh, Sheikh uh, Mashur Hassan Ali Salman one of the students of Sheikh Al-Albani but Sheikh Al-Albani rahimahullah ta'ala Sheikh bin Bazim al Uthaymin and many others they are upon the first position wallahu alam so if it is judiciously used that people can feel it then this we pray that is not like what max because the case of max they are doing this in order to watch to the vow people sweat bin batil wallahu alam Okay. Okay. Those smuggling them. Nam. Uh, now uh, we, we should differentiate between bringing in things that are banned and these products or items that are banned the sharia is also against them so this is what 
this is agreed upon. But if the government bans something and the Sharia does not ban it, what should we do in a situation like that? This is something that is mubah, and the government bans it. Should we act con contrary to that? Here yes, scholars will say, take it easy. Now, there is a difference between something that is wajib. The government acts not to do something that is wajib. In this case, for la sama'a wa la ta'a. The government acts you to do something that is haram. For la sama'a wa la ta'a. Unless if there is what? A threat. Eh? On your life. Then that is a different thing. So you have been what? A mukra. But something that is permissible, the government asks you not to do something that is permissible. In this case, the scholar says, take it easy. Listen to what the government, in this case. So now you bring in, in that item that has been banned by the government. It's like what you are trying to go against the, the government. And we have mentioned a lot of things. Take for instance, now we have the traffic uh, laws. Now you say you are not going to obey the traffic law. Why? Because it's not in the Quran now. And it's not in the Sunnah that I should obey the traffic law. So this is what? It's suffer. This is uh, imbecility and uh, foolishness. So if you do not obey and you are what? You are tortured for that. Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish you for that. Because for them to have put down the laws... They are looking for what? For your benefit and for the interest of the masses. So if you say you want to oppose it, then nothing will go. If I say, okay, I won't respect that law, I just violate it, you violate it. So that means there will be chaos in society. And whether we like it or not, a country must be governed, must be ruled. A country or a state or an environment without a ruler is more chaotic than what having an unjust ruler. If you have an unjust ruler and it's ruling, it's better than you having what? A country with what? Without a ruler. Because there will be chaos. Nobody will respect anybody. anybody. So, now bringing in contraband rules, this is not okay. Now evading the tax, or the custom duties invading evading it is it haram if you say the what the the, 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 the custom duty is what is haram for instance if you say it is haram and the government is asking you to pay something that is haram is it if you evade it is it haram it's not haram if you evade it but are you encouraged to do that <laughs> now it depends what scholars have said like Sheikh Al-Albani, Sheikh Mimbaz and some others is that if you escape it no harm but if escaping it is going to bring fitna to the Muslims don't engage in it particularly somebody who has name that is respected in the town for him to now be what partaking in things like that if he's caught the person who watch will be made to appear on the screen and people will be looking at and maybe the person has beers and some so look at these are people because the, the the masses the people of the of the state what they believe that what uh, why mustn't you pay he said you have to pay this thing so for for them to not be saying even and our far is what is even evading tax look at this eh? so it becomes something of what mockery so and that's why the scholars who say it is what permissible they said you should do it in such a way that what it will not bring stain to Islam then those who are respected in society should not partake in things like that because it's going to be a stain but they said what it is haram and the government is asking you to do something that is haram but if you don't do it maybe it will lead to greater fitna and this is what the fiqh of Islam. Anything that you want to embark on that will lead to greater fitna, Islam says don't do it. Even if that thing is what? That thing is, uh, is halal. Al-Imam Ibn Qayyim, in his book, 
uh, uh, this book on Usul al-Fiqh that addresses a lot of uh, issues on Usul al-Fiqh, Ilam al muakirin he said, talking about Izahrat al-Munkar, the way you can watch, you can uh, correct evils. He said, the evil that you want to correct should not be greater. The benefit, sorry, the, the, what will come out of the evil should not be worse than what is existing already. If it's worse, leave it like that. Leave the evil that you want to correct. Don't correct it. As long as when you correct it, it's going to lead to what? Greater evil. Leave that. Bear with the watch. The evil that you already have. Then if the evil that you want to correct, if you correct it, it's going to bring another evil of equal weight. So it's like what? Eh? A leg forward, a step forward and what? A step backward. You are still watching the same place. But if it's going to watch, reduce the evil. If it's going to reduce the evil. Or it's going to eradicate the evil. Then in that case, one should, should do it. So, Wallahu alam. Yes, they are Sahabal Max, yes. They are Sahabal Max. Uh, somebody that on behalf of God wants to marry her, I'm going to marry her, as bad as that is, because he comes as God to present a lot of show paper to my aunt, to my aunt, to my aunt, to my aunt, to my father, all those things, and he doesn't do anything. So, that person is not saying, you think we are a child, you know, you know, you know, you know, uh, if the other tenement rate or whatever or taxes, as long as they are not using them judiciously, all the scholars they agree that what it is haram. So, yes, to pay it, it is haram to, to, to for them to collect. Huh? Yes, it is haram for them to collect. Now, should you pay? So you go back to what you have uh, just explained. If you're not paying, huh? Uh -huh. but if it would bring greater fitna. fitna, then you pay. Not because you want to support evil, but because you are what? You overpowered. You overpowered. So, Wallahu alam. Uh -huh. So it brings greater evil. So in that case, you pay, but it is haram for them who are taking. It's just like something that you you want to do, and uh, it's your right that they do it for you. But they tell you that if you don't tip them, they won't do it. Should you forfeit your right to say, okay, if you are not doing it, I won't collect it. The scholars say, in a situation like this, you get your right. You give them what they request for. So it is haram for them. It is hell that what they are taking from you. So halal for you to give, but haram for them to, to collect. Somebody who is in need of what? Blood. Huh? And there is nobody to donate. There is nobody to donate blood for him. All the people you are seeing, they are what? Willing to sell theirs. It is haram to sell blood. Cletex. Haram to sell blood. But you have not seen somebody that will donate for you free of charge. Can you buy? Yes, you buy. Haram for the person that is selling. Halal for you that he is buying. There are a lot of examples like this. Allah Allah. Please, on, on that, Lord Bank. Do you know that in case of emergency, getting do not donate blood to people might be very, very difficult. So, now we're talking about selling blood. Then after that, we're going to spend more than a few food and some kind of blood. We are so all the ones who come to deliver blood. Most kind of donors who they give them some token after they deliver blood. Maybe around for I mean, for that stuff. But man, they come, you still pay them money. How do people come to deliver blood without, I mean, without getting something? I mean, without getting something? Now, ordinarily.
donating blood should be free. So if there are expenses that are incurred in the process of what donating, maybe the person that donates, maybe you want to give him more and the likes, so milk, so this is permissible for you to, to pay for things like this. So, but in the absence of somebody who can donate, everybody is willing to sell. So this is what has been said. You buying, you are not the one that is what, that is uh, sinful. It is the one that is selling. Because blood is not something to be sold. Blood is not something to be sold. Another thing about donation is that once we have to preserve, we have to use the generators of power in preservation. So the part of that is why... If, uh, if that is, if uh, the expense is in court, in the process of what, maybe keeping the blood, maybe the person who has uh, donated the blood for the person to feel okay, maybe take some milk, things like that. All this will be what exempted. But selling the blood itself is haram. Messenger of Allah Salaam forbid this: the sale of blood. But the one who is in need of it, huh? maybe the the the, 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 the hospital that invites people, the, the, the donors, and they will not give free of charge except so they are not sinful. It is those who are taking that are sinful. So allow Allah. Last question. Okay. Alexander. Uh, uh, the situation now, the situation of the UAT, the family now have been attacked. Because all my people, I want to recover, I want to recover, because they collect all this hospital, I said I don't want to do that. Come and work in the bank, I don't want to do that. So they did not tag me. Or let me in, you know, all these kind of things. So how do we manage this situation? Because it's really on the scale of this. I don't want to do that. I mean, Allah assist us and make our faith firm on the spot. There is nobody that will practice uh, Islam as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to practice it except the person is tagged. So Messenger of Allah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Bada al-Islam gharibaan wa sa'udu gharibaan kama bada fatubal al-Ghuraba Islam starts or started as a strange religion and it's going to watch it's going to come back as watch a strange religion So those who are strange at that time they are watch glad tidings for them for being what strange at that time So if you want to practice Islam the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it compose on us, you'll be tagged. There is no out, you'll be tagged. Because there are a lot of things that are what? Haram. When we look at it, we may say, ah, Islam is difficult, this haram, this haram, this haram. But the reality is that what? Islam is not difficult. What is the problem is that what? A lot of people have been carried away by shaitan. So this one wants to fornicate. This one wants to commit adultery. Shaitan has pushed him to commit adultery, has pushed him to fornicate, has pushed him to, to see, take other people's property, and so on and so forth. So you are 10 people, for instance, now. Nine people out of you have been warned by Shaitan. Only you has not been warned by Shaitan. So you appear as what? A madman in their midst. Don't fornicate. Don't commit adultery. Is that something that is wrong? But people are doing it. Don't take riba. We can see the evil effect of riba in the world. America, the brought of this was born by them. Everybody can see this. But despite these people are what? Rushing towards riba. So when you now say don't take river, ah, this religion is too ash. Is it religion that is ash or people are crazy? So you remain steadfast. Huh? You remain steadfast. People watch who mock you, they will say a lot of things about you. But you are not watch. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could tell the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Noon wal qalami wa ma yasturun, ma anta bi ni'mati rabbika bi majnoon. So people were calling Majnoon. They were calling him Majnoon because what he was saying was different from the practices of the people. So you can't practice Islam. Islam, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
wants us to practice it except you are attacked. What do you to the hino for you the hino? They want you to compromise so that what they can also compromise with you. ولن تبقى عنك اليهود ولا النصارى حتى تتبع ملتهم كل إن أود الله هو الأودا. So the, the Jews, the Christians, they will not be pleased with you until you follow their path. So many verses of the Quran. What do you take for you? Kama kafaru fatakunun sawa. They want you to disbelieve the way they disbelieve, so that you can all be the same. So and that's why Allah many verses caution the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. ولا تركن إلا الذين ظلموا فتمسكم النار. Don't steal towards those who have wronged themselves. Fatima Sakumunar. Lest you be what consumed by, by fire. Fama lakum in duni la min awliya. And there will be no air pass for you before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fuma la tunsurun. So many verses of the Quran talking about this. So the nasiya I can give to you and give to myself is for one to be steadfast. One will be tagged. But at the same time, one will look for something to. Yes, to sustain you, look for something to do. Islam does not say we shouldn't walk. But don't do things that, what, that are haram. This is what Islam says. Wallahu alam. Subhanaka Allahumma bihamdika. Shalom la ilaha illa anta sputuat. Please, I'm sorry. I have a lecture. And I've been receiving calls. So, but I don't want the halqa not to come to. Is, is, is that going to be KBC next week? Keep it short.